Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. Today we're going to be talking about Windows 10 no longer being supported as of October 2025. Now, for a lot of people, we've already moved on to more modern hardware that can officially support Windows 11. Now, for those of you that are looking for a rule of thumb, generally speaking, if it's Intel 8th generation or newer, you can support Windows 11 no problem. If we're talking about ThinkPads, that pretty much means that the T480, in terms of generations, is where things are going to start. That would also mean the X1 Carbon Gen 6 is the bare minimum to run Windows 11. We know, as a ThinkPad community, that Linux is awesome and it can run older hardware no problem. In fact, that was my very first introduction on this channel and in my life to ThinkPads and Linux was this ThinkPad X220, and it has been going strong ever since. This has been around the house, in the garage, out in the field. It has done pretty much everything that I could ask a laptop to do, and today it's going to be our benchmark for a series of tests. What I want to answer is how old of a computer can we go with Linux and still get a acceptable experience? Now, I'm going to have to stop here because here's where all the caveats come in. I know that there are people out there that know exactly how to tweak Linux to run on the most bare bones machines. What I will be experimenting with today is fundamentally more simple. Here are the rules that we're going to essentially be doing these tests by. One, we're going to be using a fresh image of 22.1 Linux Mint Cinnamon. And again, I know that that's not the uh, most light distro out there, but that's okay. We are only going to pick machines that have aftermarket brand new batteries available, and we need at least one hour of battery life. The other thing is that we are using SATA or mSATA drives, and uh, that's the SSD variety. I think most people will know that tinker with these machines, that if you're not running an SSD, that's probably the biggest bang for your buck on performance. And last but not least, and this I found out during testing, is we need a minimum, absolute bare minimum of two gigabytes of RAM. These systems all seem to idle and utilize anywhere between two to 2.5 gigabytes uh, RAM of their generation. The X220 is the benchmark that we're using. It's got a fast boot time. This one actually dual boots uh, with Windows 10, at least for now until it expires. We first went down the line to the X200. Now the X200 that I have here also comes with its ultra base. And the X200 is running the Intel P8400 with six gigs of RAM. And that seems to more or less do everything that we needed to do. When I was having it run a video, CPU was anywhere from 48% to 32% usage it was serviceable, and that was running the video at 720p. Then I went down to the X61. Now, before I went any further with the X61, I knew I needed more RAM based on the tests that I had done with the X220 and the X200. The X200 with its six gigs of RAM was okay. I knew that I was gonna run into trouble. So I swapped out the RAM in the X61S for double the RAM. So instead of two, it was running four gigs. And that seemed to make all the difference in the RAM department. RAM usage stayed at around 50%. However, when the system was trying to run the YouTube video at 720p, it would max out the CPU cores, and it never dropped below 64%. That is with four other tabs open, which were Amazon, Wikipedia, a Google search, and then the Firefox privacy notice page that popped up by default. So five tabs total few of those uh, constantly refreshing, and then obviously the streaming video in the background. To compare that, the X200 usage rates never really creeped above 48% running the video at 720p, and would usually bottom down to around 32% usage. The X61S would sometimes idle up to around uh, similar percentages. So it's pretty clear that the X61S can do it, but it is certainly struggling, and I would consider it the knife's edge on what you would probably want to adopt. And to compare that with the X220, it was anywhere from 25 to 22% with the same video at 720p. But very often it would idle in either just around 14% or single digits. 
I don't think uh, anything older than the P8400 is ideal. All that being said, ladies and gentlemen, the conclusion that I want to come to and share with you today in this short little video is yes, an X61S will do it. It does technically meet all the criteria, but I would call it barely. The X200 meets it with a bit more of a buffer. And then the X220 is my go-to. I've been running that thing now for years, practically as long as the channel's been around. I want to thank everybody that commented about this, either on YouTube, Mastodon, X, or any other socials that I asked this question on. It was immensely helpful, giving me a place to know where to begin answering this question. So thank you for all your suggestions. And I know that this isn't a perfect test, that there's a lot that could be done to improve the results by a couple percent here and there. But if you are thinking about how to keep all of this old but fantastic hardware going after Windows 10 becomes end of life in October of 2025, hopefully this information will inform you and also encourage you to try your own configurations. I really want to hear what you've done down in the comments with uh, Linux on your ThinkPads or older laptops and maybe start sharing this information around so other people can make that informed decision. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.